Hi, everyone. Welcome to meal kit number 19 by Curated by Becta uh, for the week of September 29th to October 3rd. So this is actually our third attempt at uh, filming this one because uh, last night uh, the video did a firmware update in the middle of it. And this morning I accidentally had it on time lapse. So our staff are, are eating really well. So I'm, I'm doing this from Becta's kitchen today instead of my own home kitchen. So sorry, there's no green background. But we've got a really exciting menu for you. So thanks for ordering and thanks for watching. Um, so I want to go ahead and jump in there and get started. First thing to do is get your pan nice and hot. I love a cast iron pan for our flank steak. Uh, tonight we're going to put some olive oil in there. And uh, we're going to season with salt and pepper our steak. We can get it out of the bag. There we go. So both sides nicely on the salt and pepper. And if your pan is smoking, it means it's the right temperature. And there it is. All right. So we're going to do about um, two to three minutes aside, depending on your heat. Um, I've got a restaurant grade stove, so it's going to go pretty fast today. So while that is going, we're also going to want to throw our mushrooms in our pan and get those rolling. Don't forget a little bit of seasoning on that as well. A little bit of olive oil to start, but then we're going to finish it with butter. And while uh, that's rolling, we are going to take our beautiful heirloom carrots, which are super sweet right now because of the first frost. And we're going to throw our arugula in there. And a little bit of olive oil, generous amount of olive oil. Give that a nice stir. And we're gonna plate that up on a nice appetizer plate here. So first thing we do is we take our cottage cheese and put that down as the base. This is gonna provide a really nice creaminess and acidity to the dish. Mushrooms are doing all right. Once your steak is seared nicely, and by the way, I've got the jalapeno infused sweet potato puree bubbling away back there. Probably a little too much. And then our sauce diab on the front end. So that's going to be nice. All right. So in terms of the salad, we're just going to plate the arugula and carrots together on top of the cottage cheese. And then we've got a sauce chien that's going around. It's not a dog sauce, but... Um, it is a, a sauce that is from Southeast Asia, and it's got a lot of fresh herbs to it. It just makes things pop. So we're going to drizzle that on top and around. Beautiful shallots and cilantro in there. Make sure to wipe your plate. The mushrooms are looking good. So next up, we're gonna put our gai lan in there, which is a Chinese broccoli. I'm gonna turn up the heat just a little bit. And then our kale. Make sure that there's enough olive oil. Sometimes the king oyster mushrooms suck up the oil. And that's gonna saute for a second. So our steak is basically done, but we, what we wanna do, we wanna throw a little butter in there to be able to butter bathe it. So just take the steak, pour the butter here until it melts, and then bathe it on top. Flip the steak over and do the same thing on the other side. Now, the steak is done sous vide already, and it's got a soy marinade. So it actually is already cooked, and what you're doing is you're just taking it from rare to medium rare, or if you want to keep going, uh, you can do that. And uh, some of you have done the Angus ribeye upgrade this week. So you're gonna follow the exact same thing except you're gonna cook the ribeye a little bit longer because it's a big steak for two. It's about 18, 19 ounces. Um, so the important thing for all steaks is to rest them. Let it rest for about five minutes while we're finishing up our veg here. And we're gonna do the same thing to the veg that we did for the steak. We're gonna add some butter to it. Now this is optional. You don't have to do this. I'm a huge butter fan. But my wife prefers olive oil. And this just gives it a luxurious creaminess. And again, 
We're going to season this a little bit because the tail is going to need a little bit of salt and the guy land to cut through the bitterness. So that's looking really nice. We're going to turn the heat off and let it just sort of stay warm. And don't forget, we're going to put our beautiful strawberry oat cake in the oven to warm it up. <clears throat> you want that three or four minutes just until it gets a nice warmth to it because you want it to melt the ganache that we're going to put it on afterwards. So while the steak is resting and the veg is there, we're going to top our salad with papitas. And these are spiced, otherwise known as pumpkin seeds. And then some of our pomegranate seeds. And this gives it a gorgeous color, but also the really nice sweet sour balance. And you always want some acidity in your dish. So give it a wipe. And there we go. So there's our roasted heirloom carrot salad with arugula, cottage cheese, uh, toasted papitas, sauce diab, uh, sauce uh, chien, excuse me, and, uh, and the pomegranate seeds. And then, let's see, steaks resting nicely. We're gonna start plating. So sweet puree, sweet potato puree with jalapeno down first. And that gives it that gorgeous color. And I'm gonna suggest that you put it in a sort of straight line across the plate so you can see it on each side because the orange just pops. Colors are so important. And while I'm doing this, I'm gonna talk about the wines a little bit this week. I'm not going to be drinking them this morning because it's about 11 o'clock in the morning, but we've got this Yanare uh, Falangina from Italy that is just so nice. It's very tropical, very aromatic, uh, mineral, and, and it just pops with the, um, with the carrot salad. Okay, now that we've got the sweet potato puree down, we're going to add the veg on top, combination of the mushrooms and the guy lan. And again, try to spread things out so once you put the steak on top, you can see all of the different colors. So maybe orange going one way, green going another way, and some brown from the mushrooms popping out. That is so key. And then next, we are going to slice the steak. Hopefully I've rested this long enough. You will know if you've rested it long enough because it doesn't bleed on the cutting board. Um, so, in every steak, you'll see a bit of a seam. It, it looks almost like corduroy lines, and you want to cut against that, perpendicular to that. So by doing that, it makes the steak so much more tender. Yeah, this is looking really nice. Yeah, you don't have to rest it quite as long because we've already taken care of some of the, the cooking for you by doing it sous vide. I'm going to put that on top. And you might wonder why a Chianti with Asian flavors like we had this, this week. But talking to Connor, our wine director, um, it's actually this particular one. It's got some age to it. It's from 2014, which is really cool to be able to, to have an older wine on this. The, the flavors have mellowed and almost reproduced that soy flavor uh, that you come from the marinade and the steak. And because it's got some Cabernet and Merlot in there, it softens it and rounds it, where a straight Sangiovese Chianti won't give you that same kind of stuff. So we plated up everything. Now the sauce. Sauce Diab. And this is a demi-glaze sauce, so a great reduction of beef uh, bones. And then we give it some cayenne pepper and a few other spices. It's not spicy, but it's got just a little bit of kick to it. And don't forget to put some of the sauce on top as well, because that's what makes it so luxurious. Clean up your plate. Make sure it's pretty. Oh, and yeah, little seasoning. So there is our flank steak with the sweet potato and jalapeno puree, a sauteed kale, a guy lan, and king oyster mushrooms. And that's gonna be a nice lunch for somebody. And then finally, we've got our dessert. So important to put the ganache down first, which I didn't do last time. So I'm glad I'm redoing this video. So white chocolate and rose ganache. 
so you get that beautiful fragrance of, of rose petal. And that's on the base. Um, it should come along like caramel. And then the warm cake on top is going to basically melt the ganache. And then we've got our oat granola. Go around. Make sure to not put too much of this on. You just want a little bit of texture, a little bit of crunch. And we put some turbinado sugar on top as well to give it some crunch. And then we've got some marinated strawberries or macerated strawberries just to give it one more little hit. And that is our strawberry oat cake. Hopefully you can see this. Um, done with uh, the white chocolate ganache and rose. And then we've got the macerated strawberries. Anyway, I want you to know how important it is for us to do these videos for you because this is my third time doing it. So we're eating a lot of this menu this week. Um, but I hope you enjoy and I really appreciate your support. And uh, thank you for ordering from us. And I hope we get to cook for you again soon.